When Steve Jobs first saw Siri in 2011, he believed it was the future. He thought that every single product should have a personal assistant baked into it. Then the iPhone, the watch, the Mac, AirPods, they all fundamentally changed society. But Siri didn't evolve. Apple's obsession with privacy has slowed down their ability to train smarter AI. And in the AI era, that looks like a weakness. So going into WWDC, my big question is, how does Apple plan to become a superpower in the age of AI? Last year, Apple came out with Apple Intelligence and it was not well received. They made a lot of promises that they haven't fulfilled yet. And at the same time, Google is building one of the most extensive intelligence systems on the planet. They have Quantum and Waymo and Gemini. But I think that people are missing a crucial part of the story. So in today's video, I want to lay out the two moves that I think Apple is betting their future on. The first is setting up a universal operating system both in the numbers and in the design. Every OS version is now tagged by the year, 26. So you have iOS 26, Mac OS 26, et cetera. And the whole interface has been redesigned around something called liquid glass, a translucent fluid UI now across iOS, iPadOS, Mac OS, Vision OS, and CarPlay. It was engineered using the same mathematical formulas as real glass, so it reflects light realistically. On iPhone, that means new lock screen wallpapers where the numbers let light seep through them, on macOS, the dock now has a transparent option, giving the illusion of more screen real estate. And on CarPlay and tvOS, it just looks luxury. I tested it and the animations look so fluid and realistic. But here's the part that I think is worth paying attention to here. It's not that the aesthetics have changed. It's the fact that Apple is trying to unify all of their different ecosystems. So in the future, it doesn't matter what product you're using. It just matters that you're in their overall software and hardware ecosystem. Because ultimately, they're betting on AR and us wearing glasses. Gestures and interactions now work very similarly across devices. And on iPad, there's now multi-window support so you can minimize tabs, control your mic input, and toggle down a top menu bar just like macOS. VisionOS has similar interaction points, and the pinch gesture on the Apple Watch is the same as the pinch gesture on Vision Pro. So if you learn how to use one Apple product now, you won't have to relearn a brand new one later. That's their first part of their overall plan, unifying the software experience on multiple products. If we're headed towards a world of smart glasses, which I think we are, and many tech CEOs also believe that we are. Glasses. glasses. It makes sense for Apple to try to unify the software experience now, so when people throw on their glasses, they don't have to relearn an entire new ecosystem. Part two of their plan relates to localized AI. Not just for chatbots, but for assistants that take action on your behalf. Last year, Apple announced Apple Intelligence, and they made a lot of promises. Promises that they honestly have not fulfilled yet. Siri is the most disappointing part of the iPhone for me. It rarely works the way I want it to. And Craig Federici at the keynote actually acknowledged this. This work needed more time to reach our high quality bar. And honestly, it's super perplexing because there are many other companies, whether it be ChatGPT or Gemini, that have created really, really great large language models. And I think Apple's behind here for a couple reasons. The first is that they have a really strong stance on not scraping data. Um, which is a good thing. The second is that they really care a lot about privacy and having AI models run on device, which is also a good thing in the long term. But the third reason, and I think the most important one, is it just doesn't seem like they dedicated enough time and resources to AI earlier on, and now they're just behind their competitors. So much of the fact that they're actually partnering with OpenAI to provide a lot of the AI integrations for iPhone, which is good on the one hand in getting ChatGPT built with the iPhone, but it means that they have a lot less control of the overall experience, which is pretty not typical for Apple. Normally they control everything bottom to top. And it also means that a lot of the features have just not shipped yet. However, the big bet that they're making is localized AI. So Gemini and ChatGPT and a lot of the other models run in the cloud, but Apple is really pushing for AI that runs on device for two reasons. The first is it should take up a lot less energy. And the second is that it will be more secure and private. And I think that we're going to move towards a world of agentic AI, AI that basically takes actions on your behalf, not just giving you answers like via a chatbot, but instead going through your notes and then creating a Quizlet for you or seeing that a friend texts you about a movie and then adding it to your calendar. And when we get to a world of like a personal AI assistant, the most important thing is not which model is the smartest, but it's actually probably which model you trust the most and which model has the most access to your device. So a big announcement at WWDC was that Apple is giving developers the ability to build into the large language models. However, they obviously can control how deep a developer builds. Over the long enough time horizon, if Apple develops better AI technology, they can limit their competitors and their access and then give themselves a lot more access. That to me feels like a crucial part of this bet. In two years time, we could be in a world where an AI agent is doing your scheduling, writing your emails, booking your travel, and you'll probably want the one that's locked and encrypted to your device. 
I think that Steve Jobs was right to bet on a personal assistant, and I genuinely really believe that AI is going to play a crucial part in our day-to-day -day lives even more than it already is, and that Apple has a unique opportunity where they have the best hardware and software integration on the platform, and they also have a device in most American consumers' pockets. But right now, ChatGPT and Google Gemini have significantly more extensive AI models. So for Apple to become an AI superpower, I think it really relies on them developing their own large language models and shipping out Siri updates that make it a significantly better product. WWDC proved that Apple can still design world-class software, but now they need to prove that localized AI is the winning strategy and they have it in them to kill it. I'm very excited to see what plays out.